Hi everyone, this is Ida of Created to Create. Welcome back to my channel. If you are not 18 years or older, this video content is not intended for you. Today I want to share an early uh, Christmas present from my husband. Um, a lot of you already have the new Sizzix switch machine. When it came out, I wasn't able to get my hands on it. And finally, finally, it was back. I saw it on, I believe I saw it on Amazon and that's where I got it. But I have seen it at a more economical price in other websites. So I will link, if they're even still available, I will link them in the description box. But um, I know there was a lot of reviews where people were saying that, um, I feel like it's on something, that they were having trouble with um, with theirs, that, you know, it, it needed some kinks that needed to be worked out. Well, it's a good thing that I didn't get mine then, because I guess by the time I got mine, everything was uh, fixed or worked out. So I want to give you my honest opinion of this machine. I have all kinds of machines, guys. Um, when my husband was able to work, he had a really good job. So I was able to buy the toys. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the one machine I have, uh, the Big Shot Pro, which is the huge one that I never use. But I do have some big dies that will only fit in that. I have the Big Shot Plus. I have the regular Big Shot. I have the Anna Griffin uh, re Big Size. And then I have the little mini Anna Griffin Impress Machine. And the one I was using the most were uh, my regular size Big Shot when I needed to run, uh, for example, a 3D embossing folder or when I needed to, um, if my die didn't cut well on my Anna Griffin, then I would run it through there and I knew I was going to get a good cut. And it was, it's the hand crank one. And um, so it was different things that I used it for. So I had to have both of those machines set up. And I had my large Anna Griffin for when I had bigger dies. And then I had my mini one because most of my dies were small. But on occasion, like my Carnation Craft, those are big dies. So I would need the bigger platform. So I have been playing with this machine for about... I've been playing with this machine for about a, um, I'm going to say about a week and a half, maybe two weeks. And I have cut everything that I just created on my previous videos were on this. Um, I love, love, don't get me wrong. I love my Anna Griffin machine. But the problem with that was that I couldn't run my 3D embossing folders through it. And I couldn't run my, um, the still roll dies through it. So there was, you know, it had its limitations, but that was my go-to machine. And I'm not gonna get rid of it. I'm actually gonna expand my countertop because right now I have a real narrow one until I get my other side of my counter the way I really, really want it. Then I'll buy a whole new countertop that is gonna encompass the whole thing that's underneath the units that are underneath. But for right now, I just have a temporary one up here. It's a little narrow one. So anyway, um, so I'm going to put it on the other side of that because there are, there's times when I'm on the other side and I don't want to have to run to this side of my island to cut something if I'm on the other side. So I'm going to like that. And if I have someone that's crafting with me, uh, I normally don't, but I do have a cousin that visits. And if we ever decide we want to come in here and create a card or something, she'll have her own side that she can stand on and have her own machine and we're not having to take turns so i'm going to hold on to my machine and two i have a bunch of new plates that i ordered for my anna griffin sets that that way i always had extra and um so that's why i'm keeping it but i have to tell you that on the side that i craft is going to be the switch the sizzix switch I have tried everything. I have figured out how to cut with it the way I cut with my Anna Griffin. 
I cut on the magnetic shim. My blade to my die is right on the magnetic shim. And that's how I like to cut, cut because it not only cuts beautifully, but it also embosses. So that's the way I use my Anna Griffin one. I know a lot of people don't like to cut on it. It doesn't cut all the way through, guys. It just gets scuffed up like our regular plates. Nothing happens to it. It does stretch some, and it'll get wear and tear where it'll crack. But a die will not cut through that, or I haven't had it happen. Anyway, so I'm going to move this aside and I'm going to share with you the different things that I've been cutting with mine. And that way you can see. Actually, I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to turn it. And that way it's still in frame. You guys can still see. What I love about this machine is that you can close it up and there's nothing in the way. My Anna Griffin has an opening in the front right here. And it also has nothing in the way. So in that respect, they're both equal except that this one you have to fold this down to run your plate and I actually like this uh, I'm going to compare both of them my Anna Griffin machine uh, they both have a reverse they're both electric the only difference with the Anna Griffin one you have to push run for it to pick up your plates when you have to hold down reverse for it to reverse it on this big shot uh, switch all you have to do is turn the power on, which I'm going to do right now. And uh, as soon as you get to a certain distance away from the rollers or close enough to the rollers, it automatically picks it up and you don't have to push anything. If I wanted to reverse it, as long as I don't let it go too far, there's a certain uh, distance that when it goes just past that distance, it won't reverse. But if you catch it in time, you just push the reverse button one time. You don't have to hold it, and it'll reverse everything out. So I'm going to cut a few things for you so you can see, but I'm also going to tell you how what comes with the machine. Um, I have mine sitting up here on my desk. I haven't put nothing away because I wanted to share it with you all, but I really need to put it away. What came with my machine, and let me close this for a second. This has a flat top, and you can stack things on top, just like the Anna Griffin, pretty much. But I don't like to do that because I don't want to scuff up my machine. So what you get is you get a set of dies. I haven't even opened these. They're still brand new. So you get that. You get this die. Again, I haven't opened it. You get this hexagon-shaped die. And then you get your instruction sheet or booklet. It's more like a sheet folded up so you get that I haven't even opened anything I haven't even used that stuff you get uh, two clear acrylic plates that I haven't opened <laughs> and you get uh, the the base plate which is the gray one and the green one what I love about this and I have always liked this about the big shots is Sizzix is that the instructions on the, the layers, the sandwich, are right on the platform. So I really like that. But as much as we cut and all that, guys, we pretty much know what to do. But if, if you're a beginner, this tells you, depending on what die you're using or embossing folder, how to, how to layer it. So that's, and they both have instructions. So the green one has for the framelits, for the thinlets, and for dies that are very intricate that have a lot of detail. And then the gray one has for the textured impressions, uh, for the 3D embossing folders, the textured fades, impresslets, um, A4 textured impressions, I don't have any of those. Um, it does have for the thinlets, and, uh, and it tells you how to create that sandwich. Like for the 3D, for the 3D fades, for the 3D impresslets, for everything, it tells you how to layer it. So that's very, very helpful. And you don't have to be pulling out the book to look because they're all on, on the shims. So I like that. I have not even used this, guys, because I didn't need to. I can use the plates from my regular size Big Shot, the hand crank, in this machine. I have figured out I like to cut on my magnetic shim from my from my Anna Griffin impress uh, it will tend to crack 
like it has here kind of part you know it's got a rip here and there where it has cracked open uh, but it doesn't cut all the way through or anything like that it just cracks from being compressed and eventually it'll stretch out and crack but this is still very usable I've had this for a really long time I always like to use a sheet of uh, this is a clear film that I get from Carnation Craft and what that does is if I cut an intricate die I don't have to be scraping everything off of my magnetic sheet because it's all on this and I can just take this off and kind of dust it off in the garbage and that's why I use that and my die cuts won't get stuck to my magnetic shim because they're so compressed so deeply into the into the magnetic uh, plate or shim so that's why I use that but I figured out that I can still do this so for me when I first tried it out, I thought, ah, if they had only figured out, the puppy wants my attention. Go over there. Go. Go. Um, I figured out that um, how to cut using my magnetic shim. At first, I didn't want to do that. I wasn't sure. But then I said, you know what? I'm just going to try it. If, it. if it's too thick, if it doesn't work, it just won't receive it. It won't accept it. So I, I think I'm okay. So, but I kind of measured the thickness of my, 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 my magnetic shim and the thickness of the green shim that came with uh, the machine. And they were about the same. So I figured that if I remove the green shim and replaced it with my magnetic one that would be the equ equivalent to the same thickness so this is how i cut i use just my clear my gray plate not the green one a clear acrylic my magnetic shim and then here on top of here i would add my die and i'm going to do that right now so you guys can see and I'm just going to cut on a scrap piece of paper because you all know i got a bunch of scraps everywhere. So I'm the blade is on this side. I'm going to put it face down on my paper. What I like about the magnetic shim, if I had an image that I wanted to cut, I can actually line this up wherever I want. And it's not going to shift and I don't have to use wash, washi tape. That's why I love cutting this way. Then I get my second clear plate also. It doesn't warp as bad as, not even close, hardly, as when you cut into your acrylic plate. By putting this on top, the blade's not going to be hitting the acrylic. It's going to be cutting on the magnetic shim, and that has give. And I believe that that's going to save your dies from getting real uh, dull real quick. So it's going to save the blade part on there. So I'm just going to open the machine. And I'm going to run it through and you're going to see that I don't have to do anything but just put it in there. And once it gets to a certain distance, it'll pick it up. It's pretty quiet. Another thing I like about this with my Anna Griffin, when I run the plates through, if I don't catch it at the other end, it's going to fall out. This one doesn't fall out. They stay in there. The machine stays running, but it doesn't push it out where it falls. Because I have my machine on the very edge of my counter where there's nothing underneath it except, I mean, behind it, other than where the machine is sitting. If it were to fall, it would fall completely to the floor. So that's one of the, the pros for me. And I'm going to show you how well it cut. There's my scrap. There's the die. Look at how well it cut. It cut really, really clean. So there's paper. Now let's say I want to cut. When I do my shakers, I use this real thick foam. And this has already been cut once. It's actually thicker than this, but this is still pretty thick. So I'm going to cut the same die on the foam. The only thing I'm going to do for that, right here, I am going to remove the magnetic shim. And I'm going to replace it again with uh, the black one. Because I don't need this to stay anywhere really in particular. So I'm just going to add my, my green shim. 
a clear plate. I'm going to do uh, my die facing up. So I'm going to put the blade side facing up. I'm going to put this on top of it. And I'm going to use my scratched up. I do have a plate that's pretty scratched up and starting to get dented. So I'm going to use that one to cut. I haven't tried it with the magnetic, uh, but I don't know. So I'm just going to run it through. And you're going to see that it, it picks it up, even though the plate is warped. And it's going to cut it. So here it is. The, the noise that you hear is because this machine has a drop-down door in the back. And when you pull out the plates, the door drops. So that's the noise that you hear. Um, there's the die. Here is the piece that I cut out. And you're going to see that even though it was thick, it cut it out. And it even cut this thin line around it. I'm going to show you that I can remove the thin line as well. There it is. Out of the thick foam. Now I'm going to cut it for you out of the Dollar Tree foam board. Again, this is really thick. It's got paper on either side and foam in the center. And I'm not going to use this whole piece. Let me just slice off a piece real quick. And I don't cut this with scissors. Uh, because it would put a bunch of cracks in and I just use one of these blades and and I cut a piece off So I always keep it handy in my toolbox again. I'm gonna put the die down first I'm gonna put the material on top and then I'm gonna add my scuffed up plate because the blade is really not going to hit this part too much. It pretty much stops where the paper is. But even if it were to, I don't want to add my good plate there. I add the one that I've already got all dinged up. There it goes, guys. All I have to do is make sure it's in there a certain amount and it picks it up. See, it's running right there, but the plate hasn't fallen out of the back. You can see right here is the plate. You can barely see it, but you can see it until I take it out. There's the die. Here is the piece that it cut out. See the circle even just fell right out. And I can pop this out and I can use this for a shaker as well. But this is thinner than the foam. So I prefer the foam because there's a real big difference in the thickness. Look at the thickness on both of these. I hope you can tell. Maybe if I put them in the shadow. There. So there's that. So I love that about it. Now, let's say I wanted to use a 3D embossing folder. So I'm going to grab just any piece of paper. And I'm going to grab a 3D embossing folder so I can show you how nice those work. I had one up here. Um, I'll do this little mini one. I have this little mini uh, poinsettia one by Tim Holtz. And this is a, this is this one, the textured fades. And these are real thick embossing folders. So I'm going to just grab my piece of paper. And what I would do is I would mist it with a little bit of water. I would put it into my embossing folder right there. Now, to run it through this machine, I'm still going to use my little one. I don't feel like the need to open that big one and use it unless I'm, I'm doing a big die. You remove the green shim. You don't, you don't need a shim on top of your gray one. Just lay your embossing folder with your material in it and one plate on top. I don't have to switch to another machine. Come on. I can just run it through. I didn't have to go over to my big shot because I needed to emboss something. So that's the beauty of this machine. That my one machine will do everything. And I'm going to show you the paper. Look at how well that is embossed. I hope you can see that. Look at that. And I turn it at an angle. You can see it better. But look at how beautiful that embossing is 
I'm not even going to want to throw this away. It's so pretty. So that is my personal opinion of the Sizzix Switch Machine. I will link it in the description box, guys. Uh, but I believe that this is the ultimate machine, or it will be, if they were to create a shim like the Anna Griffin one. Although I have my Anna Griffin ones and I can use the, those there, I would still it would still be nice if Sizzix came out with something like this, like the Anna Griffin one that we could use and it would be compatible. Even though that one's compatible, it works, but I prefer using something that is made for the machine. Now, if you're not comfortable, don't do that. Don't do what I just did. I'm comfortable with doing it. I don't have a problem with it. But if you're worried that it will damage your machine or anything uh, because it's a magnetic shim, you got to keep it. And this is electric. you got to keep in mind that it's made for that because the Anna Griffin one is electric as well. So it's not going to mess with anything as far as that's concerned. But like I said, I love that I can cut in any material, any size die. I didn't bring out my my uh, steel roll dies, but the steel roll dies do fit in here. I just wanted to share with you what I use most common, what I use a more common, uh, a more common material that we use. Of course, we all use the the steel roll dies, but not as often as our thin ones or our embossing folder or me, per se. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that this information was helpful to you. I will link the machine in the description box, whatever I can find, if I can even find it. But all in all, I'm very happy with my machine, even though I have to tell you that the white one was more expensive than the pink or the black. This one was a little bit more money, but that was my preference because everything in the furniture in my craft room is all white. So I prefer it that way. Thanks for watching. I hope everyone is having a great day and God bless. Bye.